My name is Sarah Kramer. I'm a Davis facilitator and I work with children and adults. But as importantly as that, I'm also the mother of a dyslexic son. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. It's many years ago now since my son was diagnosed as being dyslexic. But I still remember the roller coaster events and the emotions that came to accompany that diagnosis. On the one hand, it was a relief to find out why my son was struggling at school. But it came with the realisation that my bright and sparky child, with his quirky sense of humour, had now, for some reason, been diagnosed and labelled as disabled. That's a difficult thing to reconcile, and as a parent, I struggled with that. I coped by throwing myself in to support strategies. We'd followed the support which was recommended by the school, and I didn't stop for one moment to consider whether that strategy was the right one for my son. Consequently, what followed was a long period where we battled with an ill-suited remedial programme. I think probably I was the one who benefited the most, because I felt I was doing something about it. But for my son, he did progress, and it did help. But it was blood, sweat and tears every step of the way. What I wish was that somebody at that point had said to me, wait a moment, look around, see what options are available to you. And that is my message to you today. If your child has just been diagnosed, take a moment, look around, consider for yourself what it is that needs to be done. Do research, and above all, trust your own instincts. Start by talking to your child's teachers. Find out how your child has responded to the reading and teaching strategies they're using at school. It may well be that they are responding very well and you already have a clear path to follow. But if your child is eight or nine and is still struggling to read and is not responding to the strategies that they are using, then look around. Try and find something perhaps that has a different focus. It may seem a daunting task, and what you need to do is start with clear goals. And as importantly, your child needs to have clear goals. So talk to him. Be clear what it is that you're going to be doing. Find out what he wants, what he feels he needs to achieve. And make sure that he is ready to take responsibility for his learning. It's also very important to understand his thinking style. Now, everybody thinks using verbal and visual thought, but the way that we use these two forms of thoughts varies considerably for different people. The dyslexic thinking style is predominantly visual. It's this unique characteristic that will give your child his quicksilver thought processes and the ability to see things from an unusual point of view. This will also explain why your child could be stumbling over the small abstract words on the page. Have you ever noticed that he is able to read a word like Tyrannosaurus? Because that one's easy to picture. But for some reason he stumbles over the small words like if and but and any. Because these abstract words are very hard to visualise. Try it yourself. Imagine that you read the sentence, the horse jumped over the gate. Can you picture that? Now imagine that you're reading the sentence, yesterday the horse jumped over the gate. Has your picture changed? Possibly not. But there's obviously an important difference in meaning, and that's very hard for a visual thinker to process. The reason why it's important to understand your child's thinking style is because once you know that, you will know what learning style will suit him. My son's story had a happy ending, as we found the right solution for him. I was lucky enough to meet somebody who told me about a dyslexia correction programme, and what she told me resonated so strongly that it was for us obviously the right route to follow. But every child is different and what is right for one child will not necessarily be right for another. There are a lot of options, and it's worth getting hold of a book to let you see exactly how wide and varied those options can be. 
When Your Child Has Dyslexia by Abigail Marshall has a very good overview of the options available. So use your knowledge, your knowledge of your child, how he thinks, his strengths and weaknesses, and combine that with the specialist and expert advice that is available to you. And decide what it is that will best suit him. I'm not suggesting that it's easy, and there's no silver bullet, but if you find the right approach for your child, he will fly. It's important that your child is ready for this too. The wonderful thing about the dyslexic mind is its fantastic capacity to achieve. For us the change came as we as a family began to understand what it means to be dyslexic and how the positive aspects can be used to overcome the difficulties. And eventually we realised that our son was who he is because he is dyslexic and we wouldn't have it any other way. So don't forget that your knowledge of your child is as important as the expert advice in identifying the right strategy and solution for him.